This video is brought to you by my game, Doodling's Arcade Sports Ball. Control the ball, score points, and achieve victory in a mashup of Pong and Foosball. Available now on Steam and itch.io. This week, we've seen many games dropping Linux support, so why am I not concerned? Plus, Proton Experimental delivers some fixes for a few of our favorite games. Manjaro teases their upcoming Orange Pie Neo handheld with an hour-long video, and what if there was a cloud gaming service that didn't completely suck? We'll explore an exciting new option. And details on a big giveaway that I'm doing. All of this and more today. So, Braid Anniversary Edition dropped recently, and there have been a flurry of updates since its release. But one patch stood out to me. In the patch notes dated May 16th, we see improved support for OLED Steam Deck and for Steam Deck Frame Rate Limiter, as well as enabled variable frame rate when VSync is explicitly disabled. It's great to see, as Braid is one of my favorite games of all time, and this update should improve support for all Steam Deck players, not just on the OLED model. Now, it is worth noting that the original version of Braid has been delisted from Steam, and with it goes native Linux and macOS support, since the Anniversary Edition only has a Windows build. But honestly, when a developer provides first-class Proton support and special consideration for the deck in particular, I mean, to me, it doesn't really make a big difference if there's no native Linux support. I know that's bound to be a controversial take, so feed the engagement algorithm and let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Well, if you're anything like me, you're going to enjoy the simpler pleasures in life. Pleasures like boomer shooters, for example. And if you enjoy boomer shooters, I have some great news for you. Humble's latest offering is the fully loaded Night Dive FPS Remasters bundle. If you're a fan of boomer shooters, then the name Night Dive should already be part of your vocabulary. But if you don't know, Night Dive are an excellent studio based out of Washington State who specialize in modernizing classic FPS titles. A purchase of at least $20 will net you Turok 3, Shadows of Oblivion, which is verified, Rise of the Triad Ludicrous Edition, which is verified, Power Slave Exhumed, which is verified, Doom 64, which is playable, Turok 2, Seeds of Evil, which is verified, Forsaken Remastered, which is Proton DB Platinum, Blood, Fresh Supply, which is Proton DB Gold, the original Turok, which is playable, and Sin Gold, which is playable. Now, I already own four out of these nine titles, but I am going to be picking up this whole bundle because the $20 fee for entry is less than the cost of Turok 3 on its own, which is a title that I've been meaning to pick up anyway. Plus, a portion of any purchase that you make on Humble goes towards charity, and if you use my affiliate link below, you'll also be helping out this show as well, so thanks. Now, speaking of Night Dive, they're the studio behind the System Shock remake that had been successfully kickstarted a while back. They raised over $1.3 million to get the game off the ground, but the process didn't prove to be that straightforward. Linux and macOS ports of the game were considered stretch goals, and while the game released in May of 2023, the Linux and macOS clients have been persona non grata. In a post dated May 21st, 2024, Night Dive announced their Xbox and PlayStation releases for System Shock. At the end of the post, they included an FAQ, or a, a FAQ, uh, whatever. And the last question is of note for this channel. Is System Shock still coming to macOS and Linux? Answer, unfortunately, no. Plans for macOS and Linux releases of System Shock have been shelved. Now, this isn't particularly surprising. Apple has been closing down macOS for years now, and sideloading apps has become harder and harder to do on your own PC. And with Proton being as robust and all-encompassing as it has become, native Linux ports just haven't made financial sense for a lot of studios. I, I can understand how a lot of people might be disappointed by this fact. I mean, honestly, if you pledged your support to this Kickstarter campaign on the premise that they would be releasing uh, a Linux client of the game, I can understand you'd be disappointed by this. Um, but I can't say it's all too surprising now. Speaking of Proton, let's talk about the latest Proton Experimental. On May 23rd, we saw many more game-specific features and fixes. Notably, they've integrated the Proton Hotfix for the finals, where the game would crash after a recent update, which they have now fixed. They improved Chinese font rendering in Cosmeteer, Starship Architect, and Commander. They fixed Descent 3 not working in GL mode. They fixed Bloons Monkey City thinking it's offline when IPv6 support is disabled. 
and they fixed Halo Infinite rendering using a weird resolution on a Steam Deck. They also applied the same CPU core limiter fix that we talked about with uh, Command & Conquer last week to the game Call of Juarez Gunslinger, which has short up performance in that title. All in all, this is yet another great set of improvements for the experimental branch of Proton, and it's sure to land sometime soon in an upcoming release of Proton. All right, Manjaro developer Philip Mueller recently showed off the Orange Pi Neo in an hour-long video on the Manjaro Linux YouTube channel. Now, you can check that video out here. In the video, Philip showed off their TDP settings overlay as well as gameplay for Star Wars Battlefront 2. It's exciting to see more information coming out about the Neo and to see it playing games in action. A few things that I noticed about the device in this video. It has some impressive power with a Ryzen 7 7840U, and it can play Battlefront 2 without flinching, which is pretty great. The RGB around the thumbsticks looks pretty snazzy too. However, the D-pad and face buttons sound almost like tactile switches rather than membrane buttons that you'd find in most other controllers. You can also definitely hear the device's fans ramping up when the game starts and having an audible presence throughout most of the gameplay. And speaking of audio, it's hard to tell if the speakers on this device have notably muted bass or if the recording equipment used to make this video just doesn't sound very good. Now, keep in mind that this is still prototype hardware and software, so some or all of the things that I've pointed out are subject to change. But I would like to know your thoughts. Are you excited about the Neo? Sound off in the comments below. And while you're down there, why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube you want to see more videos just like this. You can also subscribe to the channel to get updates for when I release a new video here. Also, at the top of this video, I mentioned my game Doodlings. We're actually doing a giveaway that ends next week, so make sure that you use the links below to sign up for that giveaway. We're giving away 10 copies of my game, so don't forget to check that out. You can also sign up for our email newsletter. We'll be doing monthly giveaways, previews of our upcoming work, and other fun stuff in there. Now this has been on my radar for a minute, but have you heard about Netris? Netris is an open source cloud gaming platform built for you to play together with your friends. Their team builds this project as a self-hostable GeForce Now alternative with the social features of the now defunct Google Stadia. The key features of this project are that it runs on Linux and uses Proton GE for compatibility. It uses the Quick protocol for the lowest latency possible. It automatically syncs with your game and makes progress shareable with friends via a hyperlink. They also offer co-op gameplay with up to eight players, cross-platform play through Chrome and other Chromium-based browsers, and there's more to come. Plus, Netris syncs with your Steam account, and you can play your own games through their service. Now there are a few technical requirements here, and the first is that you need an NVIDIA GPU. Sadly, there's no support for AMD GPUs yet, but I'm hoping that that will come as an option in the future. However, if you don't have the local infrastructure or the technical know-how to set this up for yourself, you can sign up and use their service, which seems to be reasonably priced. Again, this all connects with your Steam account, so there's no games to buy from them. They make their money through subscription fees, and you play your games on their cloud. And you don't even have to do that. You can self-host it if you have the hardware. I find this quite exciting. All right, last week we talked about SteamOS 3.6 Preview. It was a huge update for the deck that's bringing with it a bunch of much needed updates. And this week, Valve published a small update to the SteamOS Preview channel. This change fixed an issue with Halo Infinite where HDR couldn't be enabled. It also fixed a problem where the Steam session would crash after using keyboard and mouse Steam input bindings, which is something that I've actually encountered on preview right now. Although there is still the known issue of the sound driver crashing. Uh, once they have this fixed, it'll probably make its way to the beta channel and swiftly land for other Steam Deck owners soon. That's all the news that I wanted to cover today. I want to thank my patrons for their continued support. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to do this. If you enjoy these videos, make sure you get subscribed to stay up to date with all the fun stuff we're doing here on the channel. Check out Subscribe to Me, which is my own streaming service. Uh, and with that, have a great day.